Britain's best-loved High Court enforcement agents are back. Hello, can come out the door, please. In this brand new special, they're pushed to their limits. Well, I'll smash the window then. It's false imprisonment. Dealing with desperate debtors. That's an immediate eviction. <laughs> in dramatic situations. You want to stand here like a big man. Leave it. Talk to me. Talk to me. Push me about. Because whatever happens... Do not assault me. If you can't pay... All I'm interested in today is are you going to pay? No, I'm not too prepared to get off feet. They'll take it away. It's been estimated that in the UK, 15 million families are living on a financial knife edge, falling behind on bills and using credit to pay for essential costs. What's next job, Del? Yeah, it's uh, Mr Carmelo Pettix. Kevin Stokes and Del Anglin are High Court enforcement agents. They travel across the country, chasing debts and debtors. Dell spent over 20 years in the police, and Kevin has had 12 years in enforcement. Their years of experience have taught them to always be on their guard. Their initial reaction is anger. They'll want to strike out at us. Um, I think it's the realisation that the debt isn't just going to be brushed under the table. They've got to face up to it now. Today, they're heading to Herne Hill in South London with a writ for an unpaid debt of five and a half thousand pounds. There we go, this one. Is this 32? The writ entitles them to collect the money or goods to the same value. The agents are faced with some large security gates. But their luck is in. Hello there. Hello, sir. Nice to meet you. Large dogs may be running free. Sign signed all the post. All in the debtor's name. He's got CCTV. Where? Where? Every premises I attend, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking I'm, I could potentially get attacked today. This could go one way or the other. They'll either accept me or they'll want to attack me. You might be walking the dogs, Kev. Car's here, so that's a good sign. See if I can get around the back there. But just as Kevin goes to check, the front door opens. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Oh, sorry, Bobby. We're High Court Enforcement Officer, sir. For what? Are you Mr Carmelo Pettix? What, what is that for? Carmelo Pettix. Yeah, but what is it for? Is that you, sir? No, he's not here. OK, do you know where he is? Yeah, he's in Dubai. Okay, would you like to give him a call? Call for us, sir, please. There's, there's four Dobermans in here. Yeah, no problem, sir. Oh. So, so don't come in here, cos there's four Dobermans in here. Fine. But with the man denying he's the defendant, the agents need a plan B. We don't have to go in there, the motor will cover the dirt. It's, it's, not amazing. it's, it's a, quite, a, quite a new one. The finance check of this deal. Yeah. Hello, Matt. Can I get a vehicle HPI check done? Hey there, stay sit down. Sit. Can you get out of the house? Sorry? Can you get out? Uh, I've got to stand here, unfortunately. Can sir. you get out of the house and I'll tell you? Uh, I'll wait here, sir, at the moment. What is that for? It's a high court writ, sir. For what? Uh, take control of goods. Yeah, but for, for, for what? For, for what? Carmelo Pettix. I can't really discuss the case yeah, with you. For what? For what reason? For what? So if, what, you should, what? if you show us your ID, sir, and we see if you're, if you're Mr Pettix, we can tell you everything. Yeah, but what do you want to take from here? Well, we don't want to take anything at the moment. We don't Let's want to see take who anything. you are. We don't want, we don't want There's to see... There's nothing in the rooms. It's all empty. Right, yeah. you get, okay. you're, you're getting this wrong. We don't want to seize any goods from you, OK? Right. Yeah, so we want to get the payment w sorted. Reports. Can you just get outside? Sir. Before I, I start getting angry? OK, you'd have to get angry, sir, but I'm going to stand here, OK? Yeah, 
The car is registered under Carmelo's name, confirming their suspicions that they've got their man. He's got finance on. OK. He's not very nice. He's a bit upset at the moment. But having also discovered it's on finance, it can't be seized. The agents now need access to the house to see if there are goods they can take to cover the debt. But Carmelo has different ideas. Check has got up tall. Oh, shit. He's got a stick of some sort. All right, what's going to happen? Uh, what's going to happen, sir, is we've got to discuss sorting this payment out on this. What? OK, we've got to sort out, but discuss the payment on Yeah, this. but you lot of bullies, right? OK. No okay. one's bullying this. No one's it's bullying this. Can you get out and I'll talk to you outside? Sir, don't no, sir, 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 please. Get outside the house and I'll talk to you outside. Sir, please. please. There's no need for this, sir. There's no need for it to but get But do you think on. you're big? No. no, no, no. Do you think you're big? No. Come on, Do you think you're big? No. Come on, Look. Well, let me make a call and I'll bring some people around here. It doesn't need to get like this. Right? I'm just trying to sort out this route. You see your face? If you're see not the person face. that this relates to, then... I'm not here to argue with you. I'm going to find who you are and I'm going to find where you live. Trust me. OK. I'm not being unreasonable with you. I just want just to talk trust to you. me. OK, that's fine. Trust me. OK. All right. Let me talk to you outside. He's out of the yard. What's the...? Sorry. Do you want them bullies that go around bullies, old fucking women? Come hello. Come hello. Look, come around bullies. No, we're not bullies. Come hello. 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 Come on, man. Come on. Swear to God, man. Come on, 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 man. Come High Court agents Kevin and Dell are attempting to recover a five and a half thousand pound debt from Carmelo Pettix. You want them bullies that go around bullies at old fucking women, didn't you? Carmelo. Carmelo. But what started as a routine job has turned into an alarming showdown. Come on, 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 come Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. I said to you I'll sort it out. All right, talk but to you me. won't yeah, stand there like a fucking big man to push me about. No, come on, mate, talk to me, talk right. to me. Leave, leave it, leave it. You want to stand here like a big man? Leave it, talk to me, to talk to me. Push me about. Talk to you me. Go come on, fucking threatening old women. Come on, leave it. Go around threatening old women. Oh, shit. Kevin has to remain calm or he'll lose his licence. His only course of action is to call the police. Yeah, grab yeah, police or uh, okay. assistance, please. Come on, you've got to find the police. Talk to me, talk to me. Talk to me, come on. Why are you finding the police for now? Talk to me. Hey? Look at you. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Come on. Talk to me. Who's that route for? It's a good, he's a cool comment. Oh, really? oh, What's the deal? Oh, we don't even know what it's about. Hello? I've just been assaulted by a guy, grabbed me round the neck, grabbed me hands, he's uh, threatened to kill me. Uh, he's 40s, Tell six foot, video. large. Yeah. I'll tell you what, it's disgusting, isn't it? Although Kevin's retreated, he still needs to keep a close eye on Dell. No, I don't wait for him. Don't worry, listen. It's Every not day until he comes out of his office. I took the decision to walk out of there um, because he wasn't calming down. Um, he seemed to be fine with Dell, so I've let Dell take over. By me being there, he's just antagonising the situation. So not the call of all right, all right, but deal with me. All right, find all right. out where he lives. Deal with me. I will deal send so many people to his house. Deal with me, all right? Don't right. Know. I'll tell him. Right. He'll get fucked. I will let them have their say, but I always bring them back to the point of why I'm there and to have them face what may be their demons or their situation, because it has to be resolved. What's, the, what's it about? Because we, we don't, they don't tell us. Who, who is it? Is it? Oh, it's curtains. They made up a load of blinds for me. Yeah. They're all the wrong size. Yeah. So I told them I'm not paying for it. Right. 
I gave him nine thousand pounds. They wanted another six thousand pounds. Six grand. Yeah. All right. So I didn't pay him. Within minutes, the police are on the scene. Um, this is the blinds, which is here, and all along there, which don't fit. They made them and they made them wrong. Right. They put them up, they kept falling down. Falling down. I said, obviously, they're the wrong size. Yeah. I said to them, I wasn't going to pay them, yeah. and they went away. This was about five years ago, you know. Um, I've attended this property of a High Court writ to enforce. Uh, the gentleman inside um, has physically assaulted me. Um, he's pinned me up against the wall by my neck, twisted my hand around, told me he's going to kill me and my family. Right. It's obviously a dispute you've got with him, isn't it? Yeah, but Over what the I'm money. saying but is I've already, want... told, I've already told him I'm not paying him. He took a photograph of me and said oh, yeah. that he's going to get his mates to come around my house and do me and my family. <laughs> and if I now got a wife and a ten-month-old baby at home, do I mean so? Well, he thought I was a sort of bit of an idiot. We're standing at my door like that. We're not going. Yeah. We're going to come in your house. We're going to remove goods. Right. So I got a bit annoyed. You got wound up with him. Got wound up with him because the way he's standing there with his ball dead. You right? Yeah, I'm right, mate. Friends, yeah, friends. I'm, I'm, I'm going to set an example. I'm going to be false, mate. I'm, I'm going to be bullied. Kevin still wants to carry out the writ. He also has to decide whether to press charges. Yeah. He's made an allegation to us. Okay, about what's happened. Right. right. You have to come to the station. For me. What about if, if he talks to him and just says forget? Him? But that he doesn't want to. Can you talk to him? Can you tell him I'm reasonable with you now? Yeah, come. What's his name? Kevin. You just got off on the wrong foot. So just you got on the wrong foot. Mate, right, it's my job. Yeah, I know it's your job. Yeah. It's my job as well to protect my property. I understand that. Right? Yeah. The house is going on the market next week for sale. I'm prepared to pay, if they want to do a deal with me, I'm prepared to pay half of it, the bullion fire settlement when I sell the house, just to solve, just to solve the problem. Or if they want, I can give them £100 a month now. If you... £100 a month is going to take a long time to clear the debt. It's still going to be paid. OK, I accept so, that, so, but I, not, I wouldn't that. be prepared for anyone to come back and face what I've just had to face up there with you, sir. Right. You understand? I've got family at home as well, you know? You don't need to start intimidating me and my family. OK. OK? Right. Um, so what I'm looking to do today is take control of the goods if there are any goods in it. If there isn't, yeah. then we'll have to go down another route to try and get this money. Finally, Kevin and Dell are allowed in the house. That's the weapon. That's the thing that he had behind the door. The agents need to double check that there are no goods they can seize to cover the debt. That's pretty empty, isn't it? How many rooms is in the house? Five rooms. Five rooms. Five rooms. It's huge, isn't it? I'm not lying to you when I said that there's nothing in the house. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. I'll so, get, I'm, gonna know, get, I'm gonna give the client a ring and see. Uh, all that coming in, saying you're gonna take goods away. Well, really then we, all you had to well, say you just said, come in. Come in. Nice right, mattress on the floor upstairs. Yeah. yeah. Camillo, before I give him a ring, is there anything you can pay now? Because obviously they'd like it if you got a goodwill gesture before I say to them. The goodwill gesture is I can start paying hundred pound a month. Yeah. Even though I'm not working, I'll be borrowing the money from my mother until the house is sold. Okay. Obviously, can you pay one of them today? No. Do you want to think while I ring the client up? With nothing to take away and Carmelo unwilling to pay anything today, Kevin calls the client to try and come up with another arrangement. I've been in the house. He's got a mattress upstairs that he's living on. He's got nothing else in the house whatsoever. His car's on finance. He's got nothing. He's, he's jobless and everything. He's saying he can pay £100 a month. What he's saying is the house is up for sale and that he'll settle in full when the house is sold. Thank, thanks, thanks, mate. Bye-bye. The client is prepared to do a deal. I have four documents here before, so... Right, we've got a, a resolution for this. What they've said is they want a written undertaking from your solicitor to say that this debt will be paid when the house is sold, right. OK? Yeah. If that doesn't happen, well, then what they're going to do is they're going to put a charging order against the house so right. that when the house is sold, it, the money comes straight out of the house and pays the debt off. Brilliant. OK, so... Uh, but they're going to set you up on £100 a month until that happens, so you need to pay £100 a month. Starting from next month. Starting from, from next month. We paid then. Okay. Carmelo agrees. 
Kevin's decided not to press charges, and the team's work is now done. What was your name? Delboy. Delboy. Yeah. <laughs> you think I'm joking, don't you? Yeah, very good results. Found out that we could put a charging order against his house. Um, he's selling the house, so the debt's paid. It's, it's as good as paid. Um, as soon as that house is sold, the money will be transferred to the claimant. You can't win. Whatever you tell them, they don't want to know. They want money. They want money, they want money. Sooner or later, something bad is going to happen. Yeah. Some, one of these babies is going to knock on someone's door, they're either going to get shot, or they're either going to get stabbed, or they're either going to get beat up very, very badly. And someone's going to get go to prison over it. You are, right, mate? What the fuck was that all about, Del? I fucking don't know, mate. What is that guy, eh? Blowing up on cold like that? I was expecting something to come out, a blade or something. I was expecting oh, sorry, something yeah. to come out there. Sorry. It's such a hard call to whether to walk out of there or not, innit? You did the right thing, because there's two of us. I think he's capable of, of bad things. In England and Wales, the number of tenants evicted from their homes hit record levels in 2014. And 58 homes are repossessed every day. Raynham, Essex and High Court agents Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are about to carry out an eviction in a block of flats. This is a writ of possession only. Ah, oh, this is it, yeah. The team have over 50 years combined enforcement experience. It takes a lot to shock them. But this next job will put them in one of the most difficult situations of their career. Now, turn the handle. The handle don't do nothing. Uh, but I know this is a bit unconventional, so we just try ringing the bell. Hi, oh, someone here. Thank you. Hi there. Just going to go up to number. Thank you very much. Quite nice, isn't it? Hi there. Hello. Good, Good morning. Hello, are you Miss Merritt? Uh, yes, I am, yeah. yeah. I'm a High Court Enforcement agent. We have uh, a repossession order for this property. Have you got any arrangements to, uh, to move? No, I've got a broken collarbone, a broken cheekbone. Is your landlord aware of that? No. Deborah Merritt has lived in the flat for over a year. Uh, could I come in, please? We need to discuss it. Yeah. Although most of her rent is paid by housing benefit, she still has to top up £150 a month. But having lost her job after a serious accident, she's fallen behind on her payments, leaving landlord Saeed out of pocket. I've been asking Saeed and asking and he said, well, we'll leave it till after Christmas. I'm not going to put you out on the street till Christmas with you and your daughter. Right. And so then a couple of weeks ago, I said, Saeed, have you got any news on... I've still not had a letter from the bailiffs. He went, OK, he said, um, can you not afford to pay any of the arrears off? And I said, well, no, I can't. Well, there's the repossession order. I'm afraid that's... that's an immediate eviction. In these circumstances, what we do is we allow you an hour to get your personal belongings together. I can't even get in touch with my daughter at school. <laughs> what time is she due back? Um, about four o'clock. <laughs> I'll, I'll try and put some clothes on. Even though a child is involved, the High Court writ demands the agents carry out the eviction. But Deborah and her daughter have nowhere else to go. It's sort of rock and a hard place, isn't it? Yeah. You have to evict the whole family, the children as well, and through no fault of their own, they, they then become homeless. From that point of view, it is difficult. It gets difficult. Well, you need to ring the council first and tell them that we're here and that we're evicting you today and then find out what they say. Have you got any arrangements you could make? Have you got family over here? Or what? No. I'm, I'm, I'm my mum, but nobody. I'm not... I haven't got any money. I've not got pay. 
Deborah's situation is even worse than the agent's first thought. She has no friends or relatives. She's been here about a year. Doesn't know any of the neighbours. Um, and doesn't have any means of transport, money or anything. I'm not fed up. I'm willing to go, but just give me at least a couple of days now. <laughs> Have you tried contacting, speaking to the landlord? No. He even said at the weekend, I've got the text messages, and if you start paying some rent, I'll stop it all. But he knows I can't. From the very outset, Debbie uh, struck me as being an absolutely genuine case. You know, she got a broken shoulder. She was, in my view, malnourished. Uh, she was worried to death about the child coming home from school and finding the house locked up and, and she wouldn't be there. She genuinely did not know what to do next. If you were able to ring your daughter's school, we've got a car here, we've got somebody with us who could actually collect her, which at least would bring her back here so she'll be with you, so there's no possibility of her coming back to an empty house, as it were. Deborah is now homeless and must appeal to her local council who have a duty of care to provide emergency accommodation for her and her daughter. Just tell you, come and have a listen. Sorry, but I'm going to take your call. If you have access to emails, then please send us an email. Ridiculous, isn't it? One of our agents are busy and we estimate that your call will not be answered within 10 minutes. The homeless lines are not being answered. And there's a recorded message that's saying, just email us. You've just been kicked out of your house. You haven't got your computer or anywhere to plug in your email. So where is that going to go? It's obviously going to go nowhere. Yours is like an Alice in Wonderland situation. You're really at the end of the line, and I can understand that. Unable to contact the council on the phone, Paul and Steve are desperately worried. With nowhere to go, it's looking like Deborah and her daughter could be out on the street tonight. Hello, are you Miss Merritt? Raynham, Essex, and Paul and Steve are at one of the trickiest repossessions of their career. Where's the repossession order? They're evicting Deborah Merritt and her 11-year-old daughter from their flat. That's an immediate eviction. <laughs> Have you got any arrangements you can make? Have you got family over here or what? No. I'm loving mum, I'm nobody. All of our agents are busy, and we estimate that your call will not be answered within 10 minutes. At the end of this call, you will be passed to a short customer satisfaction survey. Sorry, we're going to take your call. The homeless lines are not being answered. The family are now homeless. Unable to reach the council, Deborah needs to plead her case for emergency housing in person. Get some clothes, identification, any medication to tide you over. And once then the council get their act together, they'll put you into temporary accommodation, at least because of your daughter. Yeah, of course. Yeah. She'd had an accident recently, which left her a little bit frail. Supposedly, you're supposed to keep this separate from your feelings. It's not always that easy. <laughs> More concerned about my daughter. You're concerned about? My daughter. She doesn't need to go to me. <laughs> well, no, but it's better that she's here, though, Debbie, than at school. Is there anybody we can take her to? Ten minutes later, Deborah's daughter, Devon, arrives. With the family now together, they need to quickly pack a few necessities until they can arrange with the landlord to pick up the rest of their belongings. Hello. Well, I did. It's beyond his responsibility, but Paul's willing to go the extra mile. Debbie, there's my car. It's my phone number and mobile on the back there. Um, <coughs> so if there's any issues with the landlord, or issues with the council, call me. Deborah's boyfriend, Joseph, who's been staying in the flat, arrives to help with the last bags. 
Have you got transport or do you need us to run you down? Have you got a car? Have I got a car? Yeah. No. Oh, so no, it's okay because we can give you a lift down to the council office if you're I going like down with her. All right. Child, I'm a little bit deaf, boy, so you have to speak up. Speak up. Because right. basically, you have to shout. Okay. Well, we can take we can take you down the council office. All right. Thank you. All right. Ciao. Debbie, if you've got a problem, ring me. I'll talk you through it. Just ring me, and I'll ring you straight back, so you don't have to waste your phone money. And how do we get back in here in the next, next few days? You ring the landlord. I ring the landlord and I have to arrange it. You think he's going to let us back in? Yes, he will. Yeah, well, yeah. that's why you've got my number. If it goes wrong, that's you yeah. going to ring okay. me. Okay. Yeah. Right, take care. The eviction is finally complete, but the family are uncertain where they'll sleep tonight. You've got desperately needy, homeless people trying to get in touch with the people who are set up there to help them the homeless department, speciality, social services, whatever it might be, and they're all on answer phones. Nobody's picking the phone up. So it's as bad as it gets, really. Although Paul's arranged for them to be driven to the council, there's no guarantee they'll get emergency housing. Later that night, Paul received a phone call. Debbie and her daughter were on the streets. She phoned to say they were asking her to leave the council office and come back on the following day, which was a Friday, and they would do nothing to rehome her. Well, I thought that was absolutely terrible. Off the top of my head, I said, just walk out into the street, find the nearest B&B or hotel, and I'll pay for the hotel for the night. Paul's act of kindness kept the family safe. The next morning, Debbie knows she's had a close call. We would have lived on the streets last night. We would literally, me and my daughter would have been on the streets. Or they said that I would have been on the streets, my partner and my daughter would have gone into foster care for the night, which is not an option whatsoever. They had nowhere. They had no properties available whatsoever or in any hostels or any hotels. The council rang me, and the officer who was dealing with her case said, why are you doing this for her? And I said, because it's my view that you've, you've failed in your duty to provide her with housing, and I'm not prepared to allow her to wander the streets on a cold night like this with an 11-year-old child. It's 10 a.m., and Debbie's heading back to the council to try and get housed once more. After a six hour wait, there's finally some news. Tonight, Saturday night and Sunday night, they've given accommodation for me and Devon at the Abyss Hotel in Barking. Um, and then I have to come back here Monday because they've got nothing after that. So there's no hostels free or anything. So it's just living out of the suitcase now until for the foreseeable future. Despite Paul's years of experience, Debbie's situation has touched a nerve. Yes, it was an extreme case. Yeah, probably in the last hundred cases, it's the only one where I've ever felt moved to, to seriously take those steps. In the UK, nine million adults are struggling with debt. And 244 people are declared insolvent or bankrupt every day. Kevin Stokes and Brian O'Shaughnessy are High Court Enforcement Agents. They're in Swindon to serve a writ of control on Pavel Rusin. Mr Rusin borrowed money from a workmate and failed to repay it. He now owes £3,800. Another team of agents has previously tried to serve the writ. Mr. Rusin wasn't at home, but they did discover he owns an expensive car, an Audi. The agent's writ allows them to seize it if he doesn't settle his debt today. But this time, the driveway is empty. There we go. Hello, looking for Pell Rus Rusin? My name's Kevin Stokes, High Court Enforcement Agent. Um, could I speak to him, please? No, 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 no. We have a court order 
Okay. okay. Kevin wants Mrs. Rusin to call her husband, but she wants Kevin off her property. I, un no. I understand that your no. kids are home, okay? I don't yes. want to come and confirm him. For my husband? Yes, please, yeah, and I, I will talk to him. No, no. Okay, then, then we just stand here all day. No, okay, I'll go from, I, I, yeah, from, please, please go. Please. Okay, I'm not moving, okay? Okay. Don't, madam, please, don't, please, don't, please. don't, don't assault me, please. No. Okay, do not assault me. Okay, I go to, uh, I, I come. Please do. Finally, Mrs. Rusin agrees to call her husband. Sammy, please my telephone. Kevin now has the data on the phone. Hello, how are you doing, sir? My name's Kevin Stokes. I'm a high court enforcement agent. Kevin spells out Mr. Rusin's options. If you can pay that today, we can go away. If you don't, then we have to enter into the property and remove goods, sir. Uh, can you wait for me? How long will you be? Half an hour. Can you give them the benefit of that? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I'm okay. Kevin and Brian are hoping when Mr. Rusin returns, he'll have his expensive car with him. She clearly wasn't going to let me in the house, and I wasn't going to push past her and get in, because... Uh, it's unlawful. That is unlawful. Um, so, yeah, we'll just sit out, wait and see what happens when he turns up. The agents find a picture of him on social media. This looks a bit like him walking up here. It looks a little bit, a little bit Chubby. chubbier than the pictures. It's the debtor, but he's arriving home by foot, and there's no car to be seen. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. How are you? Are you uh, Hello. Are you your pal? Home. Hello, sir. I'm Kevin Stokes. Should I come out and talk to you? No, we can fucking here. Uh, sorry? I prefer to talk to you. Okay, no problem at all. Um, do you know why we're here? Uh, briefly. It's between you and. I think it's was the false accusation, obviously. I did not in the court to do anything about it because I wasn't around here. So I didn't actually find out till like two weeks ago. Okay. Oh, That's right. the first thing, right? Okay. Secondly, we've got a receipt for making the payment. And then the third thing, obviously, the people who are claiming that, actually, it's not the first time they're claiming uh, false, making false accusations against other people. I don't really think I should pay any money to those people. While Mr. Rusin disputes the debt, the High Court has ruled that Pavel owes the money. High Court order, yeah? Okay. okay which is. is has instructed us to yep. come here today to seize goods um, if you can't pay it. If you do pay it, you've got 14 days, the money goes into an account where it will be held for 14 days while you make your appeal. We don't want to upset you and your family. We just need to get this resolved. Okay, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, I do it, understand. Um, so it's in, it, the ball's entirely in your court, whatever you want to do, but if we do remove goods, the cost goes up quite considerably. Right. With the agents on his doorstep, he must now pay up and then appeal afterwards to get his money back. Three, seven, seven, nine, ninety-six pence. If you can't make a payment today, then we move it up to this removal stage and you get the sale stage, which will be an extra £784.80. As long as we don't let you in and okay. you don't put your uh, foot inside of the house, mm -hmm. you're not really allowed in. OK. So you cannot really force the door. We're, we're right? not allowed to force into your yeah. house. That's correct. Yeah. OK. Mr Rusin's correct. The agents can't force their way in and he seems unwilling to pay. But if they can locate his car, they could potentially seize it to cover the debt. Hey, give me two minutes, I'll be back. Hang on, hold on, give me two minutes, I'll be straight back. Give me two minutes, I'll be straight back. So Brian decides to turn detective. They hope the car is parked close by. A lot of the time it's, it's, it's all a game, um, a, like a game of chess with the, with the debtors. It's one move they make, we've then got to outsmart that move. Um, they'll try and hide an asset for us, from us, we'll have to try and find it. Um, they'll try and stop us from getting in, we'll have to try and find a way in. It's, it's all, it's all um, move for move, if you like, and uh, we're pretty good at coming out on top. Right, somewhere, isn't it? While the agents scour the local streets, Pavel remains adamant that he won't pay up. I put possibly could actually organise the money, pay them up, and obviously and try to claim within 14, uh, 14 days, as they said. I've got 14 days so to go to court and get that resolved. But I don't really see why I should. Hello, mate. Right, you know this one, the Aldi? What colour was it? Using their experience, the agents try the local pub car park. There's a grey Aldi A8 in the car park. So we're guessing six. I just want to make sure no one owns this in here, do you know what I mean? Hello, mate, how are you? Any of your punters owe this AA? 
Before they can be absolutely sure the car is Pavel's, Brian quizzes the pub customers. Any of you guys driving the A8? Was it about five minutes ago? Yeah. Lovely. Happy days. Yeah, I know who he is. Lovely. They've hit the jackpot. The agents can't clamp the car here. They must wait till it's on the public highway or Pavel's drive. If it tries to be smart or outsmart me, it's not personal. Um, I don't take it personally. I, uh, it's not a challenge to me. I'll just deal with what that data has to say to me. Um, again, I won't disclose all the information I know. I'll just play the game, so to speak. All right, I'm going to say to you now, we're going to play the car. No, you don't tell him. You don't tell him and you come back when he moves it. You know what car it is. You with me? You don't let on. You deal with him now. Yeah. Brian gives Mr. Rusin one last chance. If he refuses to pay, they'll seize the car. OK, Powell, all I'm, inter all I'm interested in today is are you going to pay, yes or no? Uh... No, I'm not too prepared to get up late. Shame to, to be honest. Yeah. Thank you very much. No, that's uh, cool. That's it. Cool. So you're refusing to pay? I'm refusing to pay based on what I've said. No problem at all. Yeah. No problem. But there is a problem. No, that's fine. You do what you got to do, and we'll yeah. do what we got to do. No problem. Okay. What's your steps? Obviously, what you've got to do. No, don't worry about that. We'll, we'll, no, I'm no, not going to no, disclose no. that to you. I'm, I'm going to. Cool. You do what you got to do, and we, we do what we got to do. All right. So make make your application, to set it aside, yeah. and then uh, we take it from there. All right. So I expect you to be back, obviously, within the next day or two. We could come back at any time. Good luck. Thank you very much. Good luck. Bye bye. Same to you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Pavel's blunt refusal to pay has played directly into the agent's hands. If he moves the car they can seize it. That's his car? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Um, we need to go over a couple of hours. Yeah. Pavel thinks he's gained more time. I'm, I'm going actually to uh, make my appeal. I will send, obviously, the copy of evidences to it. And then from then, uh, we'll see. This is it. He has no idea that we know that's his car. He has not got a clue about it. He won't think we'll come back tonight. No. He but, thinks we're coming back tomorrow. But I'm going to wait around. I'll see it out. Now this is the kick up the arse, now he wants to go and get it set aside. You know, it's too late. Brian and Kevin must now sit tight and hope that Pavel moves the car. If he does, the agents will be ready and waiting. High Court Enforcement agents Brian and Kevin are in Swindon to collect £3,800. Debtor Pavel Rusin has refused to pay. He hid his expensive car outside a nearby pub, but the agents found it. Was it about five minutes ago? Yeah. Lovely. Happy days. Yeah, I know who he is. Lovely. If he moves it back onto his property, Brian and Kevin can seize it. So the agents are waiting. Cat and mouse all the time. It's a battle of wits sometimes. They will try and outsmart you. But a lot of the time, with the experience we have, we can see what's coming. We can see, we can kind of preempt what's going to happen, and we're a step ahead. It's a game, isn't it? After waiting a couple of hours, they're ready. Brian and Kevin are hoping that their strategy has paid off. Yeah. And that Pavel's car is on his drive. Yeah, camp it, camp it, camp it. The car is now the property of the court. Clamp your car. We're taking the car. Give him a few minutes, and if I'm not happy, then I'll look at removing the asset. But I don't want to do that. I'd rather him come out and talk to me. <coughs> Hello. I'll show you the documents. It's off my car. Cool. And insurance, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Whose car is it? It's my dad's. It's your dad's car? It is. OK, is he in the insurance as well? With Pavel now denying it's his car, the agents need to prove ownership with insurance documents. Logbook, log, logbook isn't proof of ownership? It says there, sir, this document is not proof of ownership. It might okay. be registered to your dad. Your dad is just registered to tax and insure the vehicle, Let's see sir. your insurance, please. Does your dad live here? Uh, no. No, he doesn't live here. Visiting. Sorry? He's visiting. He's here now? Yeah. OK, can you get his insurance documents here? I don't know. Do you want to go and ask him? Well, I don't know. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's yours. That's yours. We're just going to take the vehicle, sir. Can you can you make this payment? 
and then sort it out with the, with the courts tomorrow. I'd rather you do that. This is obviously very tricky for me. Eh? No, no, it's not. We, 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 we spoke about it. No, no, no. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What, what I told you earlier yeah. was I'm going to do what I need to do, and you do what you've got to do. Didn't I say that? You thought yeah. you'd be smart and park your car down in the cup, pub car park. Why did you do that? Because I didn't want to see the car. There you go. Why don't you want to seize the car? Because it's yours. You've registered the vehicle in your dad's name, which is fine. But look for, look, the logbook isn't proof of ownership, and I've asked you for your insurance documents, which you can't provide. I'm happy the vehicle's yours and you're using it, OK? So it's entirely up to you how you want to play it. Can you step out of the No, he's going to stay there. I'm instructing you to stay there, please, Kevin. No, Talk to you. me and pay it, and then he'll leave your car and we'll leave the car here, OK? Displeased at the turn of events, Pavel locks the car with Kevin inside. Pavel, can you unlock the car, please? It's false imprisonment. It's false imprisonment. Open the door, please. Thank you. Thank you. It's open. What's he doing? So I'm so happy to see it. It's his car. Just because it's not registered to him, it's his. His neighbours have confirmed it's his car. He drives it all the time. He's parked it down the road. Kevin finds that the paperwork is in Pavel's name, confirming their suspicions he is the owner. Well, MOT's in his name. That's fine. Take pictures of it. That's it. Keep it. Hold on. Keep on. Keep on. With his car now seized, Pavel's bill has escalated to £4,564 with the sale and disposal fee. I don't want any confrontation with Absolutely. you. If you can't pay it, then we will take it the car way, sir. We're always playing playing games with debtors. Um, they like to give us the runaround. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's a cat and mouse game. Um, but they get caught. Brian has run out of patience. He gives Pavel a final ultimatum. What I want from you, pal, it's £4,564.73. Can you pay that, yes or no? That's all I'm interested in. Let, let, let me see. Yeah. I'm prepared to pay that £3,770. No. £3, £3, Sir, with, with no. It's gone from that. We okay. said to you earlier, we would do what we have to do, you do what you have to do. Is that, is that not what we said? We didn't really say anything about we that. We told you to okay. pay it, and you, you told us... Hang on, you told us. Well, we're um, we're I'm not... Hang on, hang on, you're, hang on, hang on. Your, your, your words were, yeah. I'm not paying it. Didn't or did you not say that to me? I did, it gave yeah, you the that. opportunity. Okay, fine, cool. And I said to you, you then asked me, what am I going to do? Do you ask me that? Yeah, I did. And I told you, I'm not going to. Hang, to hang on, hang on, pal. I told you that I'm not going to disclose that information to you. Is that correct? Yes. Right. So now, give me a debit card. I'll take the payment, issue a receipt and the High Court writ. Go and speak to your solicitor around the corner all tomorrow morning. Make your application to court, file it out at court, and get your money back. You're arguing with the wrong people. I'm asking you nicely. As a gentleman, can we just go to agreement? To get Pavel to pay up, Brian offers to drop the sale and disposal fee. Okay. Pay me the original amount we asked for you, the £3,779.96. If you can do that, I'm happy. Well, let's, do it. let's, let's get it done. Okay. Let's get it done, OK? Thank you very much, sir. That's a, that's a good show. Fantastic result. Yeah. Check the amount. Yeah, OK. So, yeah, well. that's for you. It'll be in, in an account. Yeah, let's set aside 14 days for you to do that, all right? Okay. Trusty quick clamp. It's been a battle of wits, but the agents finally have the result they wanted. Have a good day, sir. Thank you very much. Pavel maintains that he will be applying to court for a refund. Now oh, I've got the receipt obviously for that money. I've got 14 days to prove it actually I'm right to get my money back. On Channel 5, body art pushed to the absolute limit as the Brazen Britain season continues with brand new 2,000 tattoos, 40 piercings and a pickled ear.